picked up a load of lumber from the local sawmill that I found and we ordered it, I don't know, a month or so ago. All one by material pine for our window jams, door jams, casing, baseboard, all those kinds of things. And they cut, cut it and milled it to spec. I ordered it S4S in different widths and uh, ended up being about 30% less than my local lumber yard. So I'll be ordering from them again, obviously in the future, because we have lots of furniture to build. So the first project here is to get the kitchen window trimmed out so that Stan the Tile Man can come back and do our backsplash in the kitchen. So that's the first one I'm going to work on. I've got the box built for the window jams. Obviously we had to make really wide window jams for ICF walls. Uh, this was a 1 by 12. I ripped it down to I think it's about 9 and 3 quarters. And then I cut some trim out of 1 by 4s. All of it's going to be very... Uh, rustic looking to match the house. We're kind of going for that Skyrim mountain chalet sort of look. And that's pretty cool because pine's pretty cheap compared to most woods. And now that we figured out a cool method of staining and getting the look we want, it's working out. I got all this stained yesterday. I just assembled this box. Now I'm going to put a coat of poly on, let it dry, probably wait till tomorrow and then install it. And then call Stan the tile man. All right, window jam box is dry. That didn't take long at all, about an hour, because I put on a relatively light coat, so we have a low sheen. I'm gonna try and set this thing in there. Cross your fingers. Oh. Wow, that's gonna look pretty good. I'm going to nail it in and then we'll start on the trim. So since this is an ICF wall, obviously, it's very thick. And we used the Fox Buck foam window bucking inside. I went around and I marked everywhere with a pencil where all of the nailing studs are, the, the plastic studs in the uh, ICF, so I knew we're fastened. Yeah, that's gonna work out just good. So I've decided that I quite like it. I think that it draws your eye out the window now. Whereas if it were just white, you kind of would stay in the kitchen. You never really focus on anything but how nice the kitchen is. So. And I like how fat it is. It's like almost 10 inches deep, so plenty of room to put stuff up there. I'm going to do all these windows and doors the same with the little overhang on the top, kind of old school craftsman -y style. Like I said, we're kind of going for that eclectic Skyrim Elder Scrolls house type of thing. Ski chalet, I don't know. It's our own little blend of craziness. All right, looks like this is dry. Put a coat of polyurethane on this yesterday, satin. This is uh, about 22, 16 foot long, one by four southern yellow pine boards that I ordered from the mill and had kiln dried. So this was local pine. Uh, it was a little rough, so I had to sand it a lot and get it prepped, and it took a lot longer to sand, prep, prime, stain, and seal than I really had planned on. So it kind of threw me back a little bit, and I worked on it in between doing a bunch of other projects. But got a bunch of stock here that I'm ready to do. The door casing upstairs, and today's, that's my goal today, is to try and get all of the upstairs doors done. Uh, I still have to make the window jams upstairs and I need to rip boards to do that. My table saw is outside and a little Carolina wren built a nest in it and had babies. So every time I walk up to that table saw, it starts meeping at me. So I'm <laughs> gotta wait a little while until they leave. I'm not gonna take, I'm not gonna disturb the nest. So I'm just gonna use a circular saw and build those uh, window jams. 
the lesson there is don't leave your table saw outside or a bird will build a nest in it. At least it's a bird and not a snake. Fortunately, no snakes have gotten the birds yet. No, nature's nature. I mean, we live in the mountains. So anyway, I'm going to start doing door casing. So a lot of times I don't really know how much to talk about and how much to skip over because I don't want to get too boring, but this is sort of how I'm, how I do a project like this, uh, jams and casing. I just go and I measure every opening, like that's a bath window, a bath door, label it, if you can see it, A, B, C. And each one of these is a different, can be different by, you know, a 16th or whatever. So. Like that's A L A R A T for left, right, top. And then there's an inside and an outside because you're going to have two sides to a door. So then I get my count of how many sticks I need. And then I take all those measurements and put them into a little app, website, place to get a cut list. And um, it produces my cut list. I tell it how many boards I've got and how long they are, and it tells you how to cut that board to minimize waste, and it labels based on your labeling scheme. So that's like A top, needs to be 37 inches, and then you need two of the legs, which are O, B, which is a whole different, num a whole different door, but it takes all of your measurements, combines them together, and tells you what, how to make cuts so that you don't waste a bunch of wood. Anyway, that's my method. That's all well and good, but what's for dinner? You've heard me talk about them before. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic meal kit company that helps you cook clean, delicious dinners week after week with step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured premium ingredients that save you time. They're changing the meal kit subscription game with options for every lifestyle, including keto and paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. Green Chef now offers more variety and flexibility than ever before with double the choices. So you can order vegan one day and have keto the next day and so on. You used to not be able to do that. I prefer Green Chef's keto and paleo options for the premium proteins and vital veggies I need to conquer the day. Green Chef's expert chefs curate every recipe so you can enjoy nutritious restaurant quality dishes at home without compromising on taste. This week's box just arrived, so I'm making salmon with a creamy lemon herb sauce. Now that we're moved into our new house with this incredible kitchen, I find myself more interested in cooking and exploring new recipes, but I still don't have the extra time to spend making fancy sauces and spice rubs or shopping for special ingredients that we don't just keep on hand normally. Roost. So give it a try. Use my code GUILDBROOKFARM135 to get $135 off across five boxes, plus free shipping on your first box. Go to greenchef.com for more details. This is delicious. Mm hmm Perfect. to such a rhythm that I forgot to film most of this, but it turned out good. I like it a lot. Every door has a, you know, a little, little bit of an overhang, about three quarters of an inch on each side. Gives it that sort of old craftsman-y, rustic wood look that I'm after cleans up these nice. Like this little nook, I just put some framing there just to make it match a little bit. Same thing in here. 
Now I have to do window jams. I've got three of the exact same openings that, to build jams for. So there's that one. There's that one. And there's that one. They're all the same exact deal. So for those three window jams, I used six 12 foot one by sixes and cut my 12 parts, 12 sides. And again, I used this cut list optimizer thingy at uh, opticutter.com. Told it that I have uh, 144 inch stock and I put in the number of pieces that I need and then I labeled them what they're going to be. So that's like item G left and right, item N left and right. That's the my own nomenclature. So then it calculated that each board gets this cut and this cut. And then as I go through and process each board, I kind of cross this off. So I keep track of everything. Uh, you know, and of course my boards are labeled to match that. All of my window jam boards are sanded, stained, and polyed. Turned out pretty nice. Now I got the pocket hole jig set up. I'm going to put two pocket holes on the top and bottom of each side. And then the top board will sit on top of the side and the side board will sit on top of the bottom. So I'm gonna build four window jam boxes. And it almost touches the ceiling. These Rockler clamp-it jigs work really good for big project like this, like a long boards, three-quarter inch material. Really helps you get things squared up. Like that's perfect. I'm trying to do this by yourself with one hand. Without these, not so cool. All right, we're on the second one. When I measure these rough openings, I subtract a quarter inch from each height and from the height and the width, so that I can have an eighth inch gap. And this slides in. This is the flattest work surface I've got. I don't really like using my kitchen granite, but it works pretty darn good actually. So I know you need the mirror. So mirrors are like, they can get real expensive. 
But if you go to Lowe's and just get a piece, you can have them cut it for you if you need to. Perfect. projects on this build that took longer than I thought it would but it's finished and I was able to save a couple thousand dollars on trim so windows and door jams and casing are done on the upstairs everything upstairs is finished except for baseboard which I'll do all at once on the whole house I'm going to start working on the downstairs which is going to be a bigger challenge because there's a lot more of it and I was able to get the mirror done which was on my list for a while so now I feel like the bathroom is finished so yeah all good stuff making good progress it's just you know all these little finishing touches that we're trying to get done and trying to do all all the inside work that we can because it's you know 100 degrees outside so that's going to do it for this one we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching polishing my shrooms